In this video, we will see how we can get the highest and the lowest value in an array. Okay, so in this array, we've declared integer numbers equals 2, 6, 10, 12, 15, 17, 1. So we can we can check at the check this values. You can see the, the last one is the lowest one, actually. So there's the highest value, 17, and the lowest one will be the 1. But let's say it's an array that you, you, do, you won't see in front of you. So you need to be able to do this in coding to run through every value and check the value and get the lowest or the highest value. So let's start with the highest quickly. And basically, the logic behind it both works exactly the same way. So in, for, in order for me to get the highest value, I'm going to declare a variable called highest. And you can see it's the same type as the array, in this case, an integer. And I'm going to set numbers at position 0 to the highest value. So I'm going to assume 2 here, or the value in that position, not necessarily a 2. In this case, it is a 2. So the 2 will basically then be set to the highest value. And now I can use a for loop. And I'm going to start the i now at 1. Because the reason for that is to, to check highest, which is 2, with the 2 itself, there it doesn't make sense. So instead of starting the loop at 0, I will start comparing from the 6. So I'm going to take the first value as being the highest. Then I'm going to check, is 6, is 6 higher than this highest number that I had, which is the 2? And yes, it is. I will change or put the 6 into highest. And then I'm going to compare the 6 with the 10 and say, OK, 10 is now higher than 6. So I'm going to put the 6 into highest. And then I'm going to put the 12 into highest and then to 15 into highest. And at the end, we're going to say 17 should be placed in highest. And when I compare the 17 with the 1, I will not replace it. And you will have the highest value. OK, so essentially, same thing. We're going to go to numbers dot length there, which will give me the length, and then I++. Okay, so this is very important, this for loop. We, start, we start at 1. You can start it at 0, but it's, it's senseless to actually compare the 2 with the 2 itself. Okay, so we're going to start at I equals 1. And then what we do inside of this loop is just to go and compare if numbers at position I is greater than the highest value that we saved then that one which is greater than the highest should become the highest. So we're going to say equals numbers at position i. And now after this, it will run through every element, check every element with what you saved in highest. If it's greater than the one that you saved in highest, then we will save it in highest again before we compare the rest. So this is the way how you compare to get the highest value in your specific array. So let's just print out the highest value. The highest value is, and let's print out the variable there called highest. So let's change or let's run this one quickly. We'll actually run it from here. So you can see there, no, it's still running the other one. Let's run it from here. It will say the highest value is 17. So the highest value, 17, is that correct? Yes, it is. Let's change that 10 there to a 20. So it will t then tell us, well, the highest value is 20. So it doesn't matter which value you put there or which position you put the highest value, it will pick up the highest value. Now the exact same thing for the lowest one. Let's use the same um, array again, numbers. And now instead of comp uh, declaring highest there, we're going to declare lowest. And we're going to set the lowest to numbers at position 0. So you can see it's essentially doing the same thing. It's just another variable there. So now we use the same for loop again. Also integer i starting from 1. i less than numbers dot length. Same as the other for loop. Exactly the same way. And now instead of having the if statement where I'm comparing where numbers is higher than highest, I'll just compare saying where numbers is less than the lowest. So we're going to say if numbers at the specific position is less than lowest, then lowest should get this new numbers at position i. So it's essentially saying the same thing there, but now I'm comparing for lower than lowest instead of higher than highest. OK, and then lowest will get the new value. And we can print it out again by just saying system out print line. The lowest value is. And then we print out the variable called lowest. OK, so if we run this again, we will get the highest and the lowest value. 
you can see the highest value there is 20 and the lowest value is 1. Now let's go back to the array and you can see there that the lowest value is in fact a 1 and the highest one is 20. So let's just change it again. Let's make this one a 35 and we make this one a minus 1 and run it again. And you'll see that your new values will be 35 and minus 1. Okay, so this is getting the highest and the lowest values from an array. Another very useful calculation that we can use on arrays is to get the sum and the average of values. So obviously by getting the average of a value you need the sum because the average would be the sum of all values, sum of all values, uh, values, divided by the number of values. That's, that's essentially the average. So in, in order for you to get the average you need to get the sum of all the values. And the sum of all the values divided by the number of values will give you your average. Okay, so now in this case, let's just take it easy values, 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to work out what is the sum of these divided by the number of to get the average. So this one is easy. It's 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 3 values will give you an average of 2. So now, in order for us to work out the sum here, we will need a sum variable. So I'm going to say sum equals 0, just to start off the sum at 0. And then I'm going to add to the sum the 1, the 2, and the 3 to get the sum of all. So I'm going to use the for loop again, integer i equals 0, because now we're going to start at, and we want to read every single value. So I'm going to start at 0, i less than values, that's the, the name of the array, dot length, and that will give me a loop that will go through every single element in that array. And now every time we run through the array, we want to add to the sum variable. So I will say sum equals sum plus the value that we're going to read from the array. So it will be values at the specific position called i. So what we're going to do, the first time the loop runs, values i will return there the 1 because i will be at 0. So the 1 will be taken as 0, what it is at the, at the beginning, plus 1, and that will be saved to sum. So now sum will be 1. Then when it runs again, values i will be now going to position 1, which is 2. And now the previous value of sum, which was a 1 plus 2, gives me a 3. And then we add the 3. 3 plus 3 gives me 6. So you can see that we have a running total here again. And this running total is called sum. So a shorter way of doing this whole thing will just be to say plus equals values. That's the same as saying sum equals sum plus values i. So now we've got the sum after this for loop. Do we know how many uh, values there are? The values will be, or the number of values will be just the length of the array. So that's easy one. So let's work out the average quickly. So I'm going to say double average equals, now the average will be the sum divided by the number of values. And the number of values will be values dot length. Okay, now just remember this again. We've got integer division here because sum is declared as an integer and values.length returns an integer which means that we've got integer division here again so if you have integer division make sure that you cast one of the sides to a double so let's say the sum in this case is six by casting it to a double it will become 6.0 and then we don't have integer division anymore where it throws away the decimal part so now we can print out to the screen the sum is and then show the sum and we can also print out the average is and then just print out the average okay so let's run this quickly and see what's the output actually I should run it from here again so I'm gonna run it there let's just run it quickly and see what's the output there and you can see there that the sum is 6 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 6 and the average is 2 so it's 6 divided by 3 which will give you the average of 2 and this is how you work out the sum and the 